A few months ago, I was sitting on the couch one Saturday morning, just scrolling through Facebook, and I noticed an event being live streamed there on the app. It was an event of 45,000 young people gathered, gathered in a, a stadium in Central Florida. It looked something like that. They were there to rally around a cause. So I was intrigued, so I just I tuned into the event and was even more amazed as later on they made a call to action. They called the crowd to give their lives to the cause. And I watched in amazement as then one and then two and then hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of young people stood up to commit their lives. They even took off their shoes as a symbol of their commitment as a symbol that they would run the race, that they would go. It was an inspiring moment. And I remember being emotionally moved myself as I watched this important step in their own stories because it was part of my story. Ten years before, I'd actually been to an event just like that one where they had made a similar call. And I remember feeling and being inspired to stand up and commit part of my life to such a cause. Not long afterwards, I went and joined a nonprofit, and I volunteered there, and then I worked there for a time. But what I didn't know then, and what many of these young people don't know yet, is that working for a nonprofit, it can be a little tricky. They certainly know how to work hard, but they don't always work smart. I find that nonprofits often get in the way of themselves in fulfilling their own mission sometimes. It can be a little frustrating when you're pouring your, your blood, your sweat, and your tears into an organization. And I know that even whole books have been written on the topic of how nonprofits sometimes hurt more than they help. Whole documentaries filmed on how poverty has even become a big business. So after working for a nonprofit for a certain amount of time and seeing some of the inefficiencies seeing some of the work just not get fulfilled in the way I'd, I would hope to see it fulfilled but after working on it that hard. I did the normal millennial thing, and I, I left. And I joined another nonprofit, <laughs> hoping the grass would be greener on the other side, and you can know, you're laughing because you already know how that went, right? The same problems followed me <laughs> over to the next nonprofit. And it was... At that time, when I started to become a little disillusioned about that call, that desire to go and see good done in the world. But it was also at that time I received an invitation, an invitation to come work at a very different organization, but still similar to a nonprofit, similar in that it was financially strapped, under-resourced, not enough manpower to get the mission done, and certainly had some big like pie-in-the-sky type goals. This type of organization was a tech startup. So I went and worked at this one-room tech startup for a couple of years, and it was fantastic. I learned so much, because not only did the tech startup work hard, but they were also applying lessons to work a little smarter, lessons and solutions that I wish I had had before working over here at the nonprofit. So it wasn't long before I wanted to take some of these things I had learned from the tech startup world and apply them in the nonprofit sector. And it's a few of those lessons that I wanted to share with you today. The biggest one being the customer discovery process. It's a process that startups use in order to bring good solutions to the market. We know nonprofits have somewhat of a, a process for bringing solutions to big problems they find. But oftentimes when a nonprofit goes, it might be something like this. A nonprofit might fly into a developing country, observe the land, and be like, aha, we got it. We, we understand the problem. We'll come back with the solution. Hold on. And they'll go back to their homeland. They'll do some, some strategizing. They'll do some innovative, creative thinking and put together this grand plan of a solution. Maybe get some big donor dollars to roll it out big. And they come back to the developing country they say, look, behold, look what we have done for you. And oftentimes, those big grand plans, they fall short. Or at worst, they hurt the people more than help them. 
Now, way, the way the tech startup would approach a large problem, and they are looking for problems because where a tech startup sees a large problem that doesn't have any good solutions for it, they know they found some big money. <laughs> but the approach is a little different. The way a tech startup approaches a problem is by forming a hypothesis. They don't assume to know the problem fully, but they get an idea of it, and then they test it. They go from interview to interview asking people, is this the problem? Is this the problem? Tell me more. They do surveys. They do focus groups to find the root cause of the problem. And only then do they build a solution for it. Not a fully baked solution, no, no. It's something they would call a minimum viable product. It's the bare minimum. It's a first attempt, a first pass at solving the problem. They might whip it together in a weekend, kick it out there and see what people do with it. And they, they usually fail, but they learn, and they iterate, and then they get some more feedback, and they iterate again, and they make it better and better as they work hand-in-hand hand with their customers. Now, you do that enough, and you're sh more likely to get a, a product or a service that everybody wants. They know, because they asked everybody, and everybody said, yes, this is it. Then they throw some marketing dollars on it and share it with the world. Wouldn't it be great? If nonprofits used a similar solution, though instead of calling it a customer discovery process, maybe it's just a, a solution discovery process, imagine that same nonprofit going to the developing world, and instead of trying to get an idea of the, the problem quickly, they just they stayed a while. Maybe they learned the language. Talk to the people over and over again and get a, a feel for what it's like to be part of this problem. They might be able to get to the root cause of it. And then instead of going back to develop a solution, they work hand in hand with the people to develop a solution together, always getting feedback to make it better and better and better. I think that's a better process for bringing change to communities and cities, even whole countries. Now, the second lesson I learned from working at a tech startup is around leveraging marketing automation. Now, None of you here are unfamiliar with nonprofit marketing, for sure. We've all gotten that letter in the mail. <laughs> and we know what it looks like. It has a cute story in the beginning of the letter, and you know what's coming at the very end of that letter, right? They're going to ask you for some money. <laughs> but don't, don't worry. If you don't respond to that letter, there's another one coming, and another, and another. And truth be told, that model worked well for nonprofits. It was developed in the late 80s, and it was time-tested. The problem is it's 2019 now, and it doesn't quite work as well as it used to. Now, the way tech startups have approached marketing is very different. Instead of sending one letter to everybody, they developed a whole customer journey because not everybody needs to know the same thing at the same time, and everybody's in a different part of the buying process. So they define the very beginning, first impression, all the way to the very end, radical fan, right? And they build messaging, they build content for every stage of the journey, hoping people will take baby steps as they read things, as they watch videos. That way, over the course of a day, they can send out a thousand different pieces of content, all to unique individuals. The best part is, is they've automated the whole system they use technology so that it sends it to them at the right sends it to the right person at the right time. Nonprofits could easily leverage that same type of technology, the same software programs in order to define maybe the donor journey from not knowing anything about the cause to get them to understand the solution, maybe the maybe even welcoming new donors, providing regular progress reports about how their donations working. The third solution, or the third lesson that I found, was around a hyper-focused value proposition. Now, a value proposition is kind of a marketing technical term, something you'd find buried in an MBA textbook on page 232. Um, and truth be told, that's, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> but the idea of it is really, really simple. A, a value proposition is merely an answer to a question. A question that you ask every time you make a purchase, it's a question of why should I buy this versus from a competitor or just not make a purchase at all? We've all asked that question. 
whether we buy a stick of gum or a car, maybe even choosing your college, you've asked the question, why should I buy this one versus a similar solution? Nonprofits have to answer that question as well. Why should I give to this nonprofit versus a similar one or not give at all? Now, nonprofits traditionally don't answer this question well. A research group called Next After actually went and called multiple nonprofits and got them on the phone and said, hi, my, my name's Dan, and uh, I want to know, why should I give to your organization versus someone who did something similar or just not give at all? Can you tell me why? Unfortunately, most nonprofits struggled to answer the question, at least the people on the phone did. They would give broad answers, vague answers, and if you called multiple people within the organization, you got different answers. Not quite the value proposition that's going to win the day. Tech startups, on the other hand, are fanatics about boiling down their message to the most, to the least common denominator, to that little sound bite that could stand by itself for people to understand why they exist and why their products matter. Because at the rate Silicon Valley runs, they know they only have moments, no seconds, in order to convince a key client sometimes, maybe even, maybe even a venture capitalist to write their next big check for their round of funding, maybe a key employee they need a win over to join the team. So they spend a lot of time refining that answer to the question, why should I buy from you? In nonprofits, we could spend just the, amount of time, the same amount of time working on our value proposition so that we're all on the same page as far as why someone should give, why someone should volunteer, and why someone should work or partner with a nonprofit. Now, these are just a few of the lessons that I've taken from working for a nonprofit. There's honestly dozens more out there. My hope is that I've inspired you to dig a little bit deeper into what's going on in the Silicon Valley because they've figured out some solutions that would help us over in the nonprofit sector. We need those solutions in order to advance our causes, in order to bring more good to the world because the world still needs nonprofits. Because nonprofits care. They care enough to go out of their way to help the world. The world needs nonprofits to also continue working hard. And certainly, the world needs nonprofits to continue working smart. Thank you.